Hello everyone, I am Avik Kundu. Welcome to the second part of the chapter Geometric Processes and Landforms of the Earth. Today we will start the mountain and the formation of mountain. Mainly we will focus on the fall mountain. Now take a look about the definitions of the mountains. The mountains are the highlands, the lofty peaks, steep slopes and the narrow valleys. The most important feature about the mountain is the height that means the thousand meter from the sea level or also called MSL or the mean sea level means the average sea level. And also they have the lofty peaks that is the sharp pointed mountain peaks with the steep slopes and the long deep narrow gorges. There is a basic difference between the mountains and the hills. In case of the hills the average height are 900 meter from the sea level but in case of the mountains the average height should be 1000 meter from the sea level. Now come to the some important terms about the mountains. These are mountain ridge, mountain chain, mountain system and the mountain knot. First of all the mountain ridge, the long narrow highlands with equal slope on the other side that is known as the mountain ridge. That means the mountain ranges which are running they have equal angle or the degree on the other side that is known as the mountain ridge. In case of mountain chain, the parallel mountain ridges should have belonged from the different geological era. That means the different mountain ranges of the different geological time, they are running almost parallel with each other. Now come to the mountain system. In case of mountain system, different mountain ridges are also belonging from same geological time or the same geological era that is known as the mountain system. In case of the mountain knot, the different mountain ranges are clubbed together in a definite point and also they are coming from different directions that is known as the mountain knot. All the mountain ranges look like that they have been spread out from the definite point. Most important example about the mountain knot is the Pamir. Pamir is known as the roof of the whole world. Now come to the classifications of the mountain. According to the origin and the structure, we are classifying the mountains into four categories. Number one, fold mountain. Number two, block mountain. Number three, volcanic mountain. And the number four, residual mountain. Based on their origin, formation and the structure. Today, we will mainly focus on the fold mountain. There are different fold mountains are there like the Himalaya, Alps, Rocky and the Atlas. Among them, the most important is the Himalaya because the Mount Everest is situated in the Himalaya. So there are basic differences between all these mountain or the fall mountains that they are separate out one from the another based on their nature of folding of the rock layers. Now come to the definitions of the fall mountain. The mountains which are formed by the folding of the rock strata that is known as fall mountain that the energy is always coming from the lateral forces. That means in case of the fall mountain, the rock strata have been folded in a different directions. Maybe that there are different type of folds are there, but the energy always coming from the either sides or the both sides. There are two theories basically explain the fall mountains. Number one is a geosyncline theory, another one is a plate tectonic theory. Before going detail about the theories, we have to concentrate about the folding, nature of the folding of the rock strata. Basically, there are two types of foldings. One is the anticline, another one is a syncline. In case of the anticline, the rock layers are moving convex upward. As we all know, the energy is coming from the both sides of the lateral forces. The rock layers are moving upward, convex upward. That is known as anticline. In case of the rock layers are moving downward or known as concave downward that is known as the syncline. Also the energy or the forces coming from the both sides and the rock layers have been moved downward that is known as concave downward or the syncline. Most important that is the anticline always form the mountain peaks and in case of the syncline they form the mountain valleys. Now geosyncline. In case of the geosyncline the first term has been given 
by the scientist Kober. Actually, the geosyncline is a long, narrow, elongated, shallow depressions. These depressions are called the geosynclines. According to the concept given by the Kober, that these long, narrow, and the shallow are depressions, synclinal in structure, they should be guided or the bordered by the two adjacent land masses. Different type of erosional agents will erode the, that kind of land masses and the sediments which have been formed that have been deposited in the shallow geosynclines. And finally, due to the continuous sedimentation process, the lateral pressure will increase and as a result, the two adjacent land masses will come very much close to each other and form the whole mountains. So this is the geosyncline theory or the concept of the geosyncline. The most important example of the geosyncline is the Himalaya. It has been originated from the Tethys geosyncline. Now take a look about the diagram. You can see that the two compressional forces are coming from the either side or the or both side that is known as the lateral forces. You can see also the surrounding highlands which has been eroded by the different erosional agents and the sediments are deposited along the concave downward part that is the geosyncline. The most important feature is that the, the two adjacent part of the landmass or highlands, they are known as the foreland. Foreland is a very important feature where we can find out that the all landmasses are bordered by the geosyncline. Now come to the second part of the diagram where we can see that the compressional pressures are getting higher and higher and as a result the sedimentary rocks as it is a very soft rocks the sedimentary rocks have been folded definitely you can see there are different type of foldings both are the anticlines and synclines in composition and they form the whole mountains so this is the basic concept about the geosyncline now there is a little bit of pictorial representations about the geosyncline now in the first diagram you can see the tethys geosyncline the situations or the positions of the tethys geosyncline there is a two land the name of the two land the first one this is the number one that is known as the gondwana land and the another one it is known as the angara land so these two are the land masses now come to the another part that is the himalayan mountains that from the tethys geosyncline now today's presentation of the Himalaya we can find out that the same situations have been there so that means the Nepal or the China it is known as the Angara land and the India this is known as the Gondwana land now come to the plate tectonic theory this is the most important and the scientific theory because we have little bit of limitations regarding the geosyncline theory in case of the geosyncline theory, the Kovar was only able to explain the concept of geosyncline which is only satisfy the formation of the Himalaya. But in case of the other pole mountains like the Alps, like the uh, Rocky and the Andes, these are the different other fold mountains are there in the whole world. But in case of that fold mountains, we cannot explain themselves by the geosyncline theory. In that case, we have to concentrate on the plate tectonic theory. According to the plate tectonic theory, the concept was given during the 1960s and the most popular introducer was the ex Cho. Ex Cho was the first introducer who was first the used the term or the coin the term that the plate tectonic. And also there is another one that is the Wilson though there is a 20 group of scientists are there who actually contribute themselves according to the formation of the plate tectonic theory but the most important introducer was the Exley Picho and this is the most scientific theory by which we can explain not only the whole mountains or the other mountains of the whole world rather we can explain the entire topography or the landforms whatever we can see over the earth surfaces by the plate tectonic so that's why it is the latest and the scientific theory by which we can explain the entire landforms or any landforms over the earth surface now come to the plates the definition of the plates actually the low density crustal blocks which are actually floating over the high density asthenosphere now come to the diagram of the plates. In that case of the diagram, we can see in the asthenosphere, there are different type of cyclic motions. These cyclic motions are known as the convectional currents. You can see in the diagram, the movement of that motion, one in that direction, also another one in the opposite direction. So that means if these convectional cycles or the convectional currents are moving in the opposite direction, then definitely the magma will erupt from the earth's interior there are basically two types of movement one is the opposite direction another one is always towards each other 
that is the, these directions are known as the towards each other that means all the convectional currents are moving towards each other it means that the overlying the crustal blocks with the low density they will collide with each other and definitely the higher density plates will subduct it under the low density you can see here in the diagram there is a point has been given like the trench the trench means you can see that the point or in that particular point the crustal blocks which is the higher in density that has been subducted below the another one so there is a two type of movement of the convectional currents we all know that the in the asthenosphere the temperature is almost average 700 to 1700 degree centigrade and in that case there are two type of motions or the movements one is the opposite direction which is given in the central part of the diagram and also the another part that is the towards the movement and in case of the towards movement definitely the overlying crustal blocks will move towards each other and finally they will collide with each other and form the trenches you can see in the diagram now come to the the next part that is about the plate boundary the first one that is the imaginary line between the two plates is known as the plate boundary so that is the plate boundary means there are the different type of plates of the crustal blocks are there but there is an imaginary line which by which we can separate out themselves these are known as the plate boundaries now come to the there are three types of the plate boundaries number one divergent plate boundary number two convergent plate boundary and number three conservative plate boundary now take a look about the diagram of plate boundaries the first one the a is the divergent plate boundary in case of the divergent plate boundary we can see the two plates are moving away from each other you can see below the crustal blocks there is a asthenosphere and the magma try to come up from the earth's interior and form the landforms suppose if the two plates will move away from each other then definitely magma will erupt and form the new landforms of the volcanic mountain so by the plate tectonic theory we can also able to explain the formation of the volcanic mountain also now come to the second part that is the convergent plate boundary where we can see the two plates are moving or this coming towards each other it means that the below the plates there is asthenosphere and within the asthenosphere the two convection currents will moving towards each other as a result they are both are coming towards each other and definitely they will subduct it that means the one plate will be subducted under the another one and definitely the high density plate will be subducted under the low density layer the third one is the conservative plate boundary or rather the neutral plate boundary you can see the two plates are sliding towards each other or sliding away from each other so this is the slide pass and this is known as the conservative or the neutral plate boundary according to that plate boundary no new landforms or the crust has been formed or no existing landforms have been destroyed so that's why they are called conservative or the neutral plate boundaries these are the basic concept about the plate boundaries now come to the mechanisms of the fold mountains in case of the fold mountains how the destructive plate boundaries of the fold mountains can be formed there are two type of collisions one was there number one is the continental continental collision and this is the number two that is continental and oceanic collision the first one is the continental continental collision means the two continental crust or the plates are moving towards each other and as a result of that the one definitely having a high density that will be subducted under the another one and the in between these two continents if any kind of sedimentary rocks or the sedimentary layers are there they will be experienced by the compressional forces and definitely they will lift up as a fold mountain this is the number one case and the number two is a continental and oceanic in case of the oceanic we all know that the oceanic crust means the silica and magnesium and in case of the continental that is the silica and aluminium in case of the silica and aluminium and silica and magnesium these two are the continental and the oceanic plates they will also strike with each other as they are moving towards each other and as a result of that the oceanic plates will subduct it under the continental we are actually trying to explain there is an angle between the subduction that this is known as the subduction where the angle if the angle is 45 degree then it is known as benioff zone the most important term the benioff zone benioff is actually the hugo benioff who actually first identify the angle of the subduction if the subduction is 45 degree then it is known as benioff zone suppose the two plates are moving towards each other and one is subducted and the another one 
if the angle of the subduction is 45 degree then it is known as the benioff or the benioff zone you can see here the subducted part has been marked now come to the pole mountain and the volcanic mountain in the coastal region and also the entire part not only the plate tectonic theory explain the pole mountains also explain the another volcanic mountains and other parts also there you can see in the diagram that the plates are moving that means the crustal blocks have been moving in the coastal region or along the coastal region there is a subduction area and also if the plates are moving that means somewhere that there is a gap between the two plates if they are been moving away from each other definitely the magma will erupt and definitely that will create the volcanic eruption and these volcanic eruptions are also formed in the coastal region also in the deep sea also in the entire part or the within the part of the land masses so the plate tectonic theory also able to explain the different changes of the coastal region this is collective changes of the fold and the volcanic mountains or any kind of volcanic eruptions if they have been happened in a same plate or the by the movement of the same plate so that particular concept is called the neo tectonic movement now come to the young pole mountains of the whole world there are two type of pole mountains one is the young pole mountain that is the upliftments or the formation of the pole mountains are still going on another one is the old pole mountains there are four major mountain ranges of the young pole mountain ranges of the whole world one is the rocky of the north america and these of the south america alps of the europe and the himalaya of the asia so these are the young pole mountains now come to the himalayas in case of the himalayas we can find out that these two are the movement the very important and the very complex feature is that in case of the himalaya the two plates are one is the eurasian plate is the indian plate you can see the eurasian plate means the angara land that means in the geosyncline the concept the angara land means the eurasian plate they are moving in the northeast direction and in case of the indian plate that means that the gondwana land actually this is not a indian plate exactly it's the indo australian plate so these actually the two plates are moving northeast direction that means you can see easily explain that there is a no collision no such collisions are there but how that can be formed the himalaya because the movement of the indian plates are very fast than the eurasian plate because the density of the indian plate is very high than the eurasian plate as a result of that the in between the geosyncline or the tethys geosyncline the sediments have been trapped of the geosyncline and uplifted as a pole mountain so by this process the himalaya has been formed now come to the the major plates of the whole world mainly the seven major plates are there the number one is the pacific plate this is the number one pacific plate now come to the north america this is the number two the south america this is the number three and the africa number four eurasia that means the europe and the asia number five indo australia or the indian and the australian is the number six and the last one is the antarctica this is the number seven there are seven major plates in the whole world we know about the term of the pangea in case of the pangea all the continents were clubbed together and form a giant continent that is known as the pangea and the remaining part was the panthalassa now the all the continents have been broken and the drifted apart so the north america moving always towards the west south america always moving towards the west from the europe and the africa as a result the volcanic mountains have been formed and also the eurasia have been moving towards the northeast direction you in the australia is a very complex plate where the indian part have been moving to the northeast direction but in case of the australian part have been moving to the southeast direction that is another example of the minor plates that is the nazca plates and also number two that is the arabian plate this is the arabian plate the nazca and the arabian these are the important minor plates that is actually the concept about the plate tectonic theory where we can already explain about the concept of the plates how they have been formed how they are moving and how the pole mountains and the other mountains have been formed